Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sake Revolution. This is America's first sake podcast, and I am your host, John Puma from the Sake Notes, also that guy who started the internet sake discord and manages reddit's r slash sake community and i'm your host timothy sullivan i am a sake samurai sake educator as well as the founder of the urban sake website and every week john and i will be here tasting and chatting about all things sake and doing our best to make it fun and easy to understand yeah tim i'm gonna i'm gonna horn in on something that you just said there (laughs) sake educator I am a sake educator. Yes. yes, you are a sake educator. You formally instruct people in the ways of sake. And I, on the other hand, have no formal sake education. You are you are the one who brings the education, and I'm the one without the formal education. I'm the I'm the I learn on the streets. You're, you're the man on the street perspective. I, <laughs> I like learn, that. I, yes, I learn about sake uh, the the hard way. I have streets uh, sake street smarts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know just enough to be dangerous, right? Yes. Well, uh, you, you can put it that way. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, ha- have you ever thought about taking a class or getting a certification? So actually, I had thought about it, and I actually mm. brought it up with a, with some mutual friends in the past, uh, some some sake industry individuals. Insiders. <laughs> Insiders, <laughs> yes. perhaps, yes. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm thinking about taking XYZ course, and they were like, you know, John, you know, you really know these things already. So I don't think you'd be getting a lot out of it. Hmm. And this was a like a like a level one. And we'll get into that later on, but this was like a very uh, a low level course that I was pondering. And and I and I thought about some more and had some conversations with the person about like what they usually include. And and they were, you know, came to the conclusion that yeah, this is something that I picked up along the way and that I I personally wouldn't have gotten a lot out of. Um, but I do think about the other, the higher level, the more advanced courses that are out there. And I wonder sometimes like, do I need to do that? That would that be fun? Would it be educational for me? And I think about like the things you learn from just like drinking sake, talking to people about sake, going to Japan, reading labels and like that. And you do learn a lot, especially when you've been doing it as long as I've been, but there's always gaps in your knowledge mm-hmm. that people who have formal education are surprised by mm-hmm. <laughs> like you, I got I can have really great focus and really great um, knowledge on a certain area. And then somebody will be having a conversation with me and assume that because I know X, I then must know why, because if I, I couldn't have possibly gotten to X without knowing why, but I have, because <laughs> I don't have the formal education. Yeah. It's kind of like learning Japanese by listening to anime for your whole life. <laughs> And, you know, I have never tried to learn Japanese, but but you come up, I I hear what you're saying. Like if you have a lot of experience with sake in a practical context, like from a restaurant or from a bar, you may know very well certain areas, but then when it comes to sake history, perhaps maybe you're lacking a little bit there. So Mm -hmm. my advice would be to look into the courses that are around and it really comes down to if you need that certification for business or not. I mm. think that for a lot of people who are in the hospitality industry, I know that's not your main gig nine to five, but for other people who work in hospitality, they may work in a restaurant or a hotel or a, a liquor store, getting that certification can actually help their career. So even if they know a lot of the material, going through the course and getting certified, getting that piece of paper can be very valuable for people's careers. So Mm -hmm, mm it depends if you're a hardcore hobbyist, if you're in the industry or not. There's a lot of reasons to consider it, a lot of pros and cons. Mm. So I'm not sure if we've gone into detail on this uh, on the show before, but my, so my day job is not in hospitality. My day job is in technology. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, in, in my field, a lot of certifications that one could get. And just like you're pointing out about this, it's even though, you know, it is something that does help from a career standpoint, if you are looking to advance your technological career, same idea here, I think, right? If you're looking, if you're in that, that field, you want to do more with sake, it's going to be helpful. It's not going to be something that harms you in any way when you're trying to get a job. Yeah. My grandfather taught me a long time ago when I was a little kid, he would always say, there's no such thing as too much education. Mm. And that was kind of the vibe that I grew up with in my family that they really encouraged us to learn as much as we could and 
take every class we could. And so when it comes to sake education, from my point of view, since I first got interested in sake, I kind of latched on to every class I could take. And now a number of those classes, I actually am a teacher for them now. Mm -hmm. So it might make sense if you're interested in sake education a little bit for us to talk through some of the different levels of classes that are out there and what they cost, what they cover, and look at when you're just getting into it, or if you're a little more advanced, what types of classes and certifications there are. I think that's something we've never talked about, and I think it would be really, might be valuable to our listeners. All right. Well, um, let's do it. Let's say I am just, I, I had sake uh, for the first time a couple of months ago, and it knocked <laughs> my socks off, and I really want to learn more. Hmm. Where should I start? Well, there's a couple courses that I would deem for beginners. These are courses that don't really require any previous knowledge of sake. These mm. are really good for people who might be in the wine industry or the beer industry or mm -hmm. work in spirits and they're interested in sake as a complementary thing, but maybe they don't they don't know anything. So mm. you, you want to find a course that's going to be walking you through the basics and helping you understand from the very beginning doesn't pre-assume anything. And there's mm -hmm. a few there's a few courses out there that are really good for this. The first one is one that I've taken and that I also teach now. It's called mm -hmm. the Sake Advisor course. And mm. this is a course that is given by the Sake School of America. And what I've done in our show notes for anyone who's interested in any of the courses we're going to talk about today is I've prepared a PDF with a list of all the schools, all the URLs, all the prices, mm -hmm. and the descriptions. So if you're interested in any of the information in this episode, just go to our show notes, sakerevolution.com, and you can get a uh, outline of all of these things. So you don't have to write it down while we're talking, but I'll give you a summary of each of these mm -hmm. courses. And if you want to learn more, go to our show notes for all the details where you can learn more. Mm. I, I kind of like that you're, um, that you're including the pricing on there. Yeah. So I think that in a lot of cases, it's like you're making an investment, especially yes. if you're looking to get into that industry and you'll you need to weigh that aspect of it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So the Sake Advisor course, again, it's given by the Sake School of America. Since the pandemic, that has been taught online, but it's also mm -hmm. available in person and it's a one day class. So you commit from like nine to five on one day. And the cost for this class is about $475. And mm you go through all the basics of sake from ingredients to production. Uh, they taste about 12 or 13 sakes during the course of the day. So you get a wide range of tasting experience. You talk about sake history and it, it's a really good, solid one day introduction, deep dive mm. into sake. Doesn't get too advanced, too complicated covers all the basics, everything you need to know in one day. So I think if you're looking for a good, solid introductory certification, it's a really good place to start. So that's a course mm -hmm. I've been teaching for many years. And uh, I think it's really compact, solid, and a good introduction. Great. Yeah. There's another course called the WSET Level 1 in Sake. Mm -hmm. well, I've, I've heard of this one as well. So WSET is the Wine and Spirits Education Trust, and this is an organization that is based in the UK, mm -hmm. and they teach a lot of wine classes, spirits classes, and they offer a level one introduction to sake. And this mm -hmm. is similar in scale to the advisor class. It's a one-day commitment. It covers a lot of the basics. You get a, a textbook and... For both the advisor and the WSET level one, there's a test at the end of the day, and it's a multiple choice test. And then you have to reach a certain number of scores correct to pass it, but there's no tasting element to the exam. Oh. So it's just a theory exam at the end for, for mm -hmm. these first two courses. Okay. And uh, yeah, so these are good introductions. The WSET level one, that costs about $265 for the one day class. And the WSET Level 1 is offered by the Sake School of America. That's where I do a lot of my teaching. Mm -hmm. But WSET is interesting. They 
work with what are known as approved program providers. Mm. So you can find wine schools across the country that teach this curriculum. So this is Mm -hmm. a curriculum that's almost like a franchise. Interesting. So that curriculum can be picked up by different wine schools and they get approved by WSET to teach it. And the educators that teach it get certified. So this is kind of a education platform that can cross different wine schools. Whereas the Saki Advisor, that was developed by the Saki School of America. Mm -hmm. And the Saki School of America also teaches the WSET level one. So that's a program that you can take there as well, but it's also offered elsewhere. Does that make sense? It does. It does. It yeah. does. Like the, your, your comparison to a franchise makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's there's one final course that I took a while ago that's really good for beginners. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people who get into sake professionally know the name John Gauntner. I've definitely heard of him. I feel like everybody who's even remotely associated with sake has heard of him at some point or another. Um, and have probably met him as well. I, I have had the opportunity to hear in New York a couple of times. Yeah, he's known as the sake guy, and he's written a number of books in English on sake, and he offers a level one course called mm-hmm. the Certified Sake Professional Course. Yes. And since the pandemic, he's been offering that online, and it's $375. And he spreads a few hours of instruction over several days, mm-hmm. and that is a really good introduction. It's taught from John's point of view with his years of experience. So he's written his own course. This is mm-hmm. his material, and he's the only one who teaches it. So unlike the WSET program, which is franchised out and you can become certified to teach the material, when it comes to the certified sake professional from John Gauntner, he's the one who teaches it. So that's available online and Uh, that's a really good grounding in sake basics. So I think if you work in a sake adjacent industry and you want to get started, one of these three courses is going to be a really good choice. They're all really, Mm. really good. Great. And and also if you're on the ground floor and not even in one of the other industries yet. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a hardcore hobbyist or like you, a man on the street, sake man Man on on the the street. street. (laughs) So what do you uh, think, John? Do, do, does any of that sound appealing to you? Or, or? I'm not going to make any additional New Year's resolutions right now, <laughs> but I do weigh these things a lot because I am getting more involved in the industry and this, this podcast is one of those ways. Yeah. Now, before we move on to the advanced, which I imagine mm. is going to be a whole lot of advanced options available to us, yeah. uh, I think we should take a moment here and... Sip on some sake. What do you think? That's a great idea. Mm, I like this halftime. Yeah. So what <laughs> What did you bring us today, John? Today, I brought something, honestly, a little different from the usual John Puma array. Mm-hmm. This is um, Fuku Chitose. Uh, and honestly, I always recognize this one by the bottle. It is the one with the owl on it. This is the happy owl is what they call us in English. Who? Uh, I'm sorry? Who? <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> wow. Who? I'm slow today. It took me a minute to realize that you were... Um, it was an owl pun. Yes. I got the owl pun. I got the owl pun. <laughs> well, how are you going to how you gonna parlay the who into a happy owl, though? <laughs> like a who? <laughs> uh, anyway, so the, uh, the brewery here making producing the happy owl is a Tajima Brewing Company. They are over in Fukui Prefecture. And this is a Junmai Yamahai. Yamahai, Tim. I said this was a little off my usual path, but it's a tasty one. Sake uses a Gohyakuman Goku rice that's been milled down to 60% of its original size. The uh, sake meter value at measure of dryness to sweetness is plus three. Acidity is 1.6. The Alcohol percentage is 15.2. That's incredibly precise. And uh, finally, last but not least, something that we've been meaning to touch on a little bit more on the show, the yeast variety is Association Yeast number 10. So Tim, are you familiar with this one? You know, I've had this brand before, but not in Mm -hmm. a long time. 
S- very similar for me. <laughs> yeah. So it's always good to revisit sakes you haven't had in a while. Uh, mm-hmm. This is going to be a very interesting to try a Junmai Yamahai. So let's get it in the glass. Mm-hmm. Sounds good to me. All right. So this is the Fuku Chitose Happy Owl Yamaha mm-hmm. Junmai. Looks like it has a little bit of color to it. Just a mm-hmm. little, just a tinge of something golden in there. Yeah, a little bit of color, but no, no particulate at all that I can see. It is nice and clear. All right, let's get that aroma. Hmm. Did I mention this is Yamaha, Tim? <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of riciness and also mm. a little bit of spice. You know, like it has a little bit of a spicy aroma to me. Mm. It definitely, um, to me on the nose, definitely reads Yamaha. If I were to have this blindly, I'd be like, is this a Yamaha? <laughs> and then uh, be impressed to find out that I was correct. But definitely has some of that going on. If you think of what gingerbread or pumpkin pie smells like, there's this mm. little bit of this allspice, cinnamon, allspice mm-hmm. aroma. And right. This smells like that dialed down to like level one. Like it's not mm. overt. It's a little hint of something spicy for me. And right. that goes hand in hand with that a little bit of earthy Yamaha vibe that these sakes can have. But I'm picking up on a kind of a savory smell to this, a little bit of right. spice, a little bit of rice. And there are- A little bit of spice, a little bit of rice. Yes. <laughs> TM. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Trademark sake revolution. Hold on to that one. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, let's taste it. All right. Mm. Mm. Savory. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And honestly, uh, we're having this a little bit chilled right now. I don't, mm. I don't know about you. Yeah. Uh, I'm having this a little bit chilled right now. I feel like this is something that is going to really love being at room temperature. It's going to really love being a few degrees above room temperature. <laughs> it's I think warming this up would go a long way. Uh, mm. It's nice by itself. It's nice, nice and chilled. Also, I also feel like it really wants food. Yeah, the finish is nice and dry. I find that the the spiciness continues on the palate. It's got a mm-hmm. nice uh, weight to it. Mm. Uh, generally, lightly dry. A little and, bit, yeah. Um, there's that savoriness there too it's um very when you say earthy sake people get scared sometimes and run in the other direction but this has a, I, i'm one of those people <laughs> <laughs> i thought you might be uh but this has but, but i do understand what you mean it this has is, a gentle earthiness earthy. gentle yeah. earthiness gentle too. oh i like yes. that gentle earthiness yes yeah there's mm-hmm. some funkadelic brews out there that taste like <laughs> drinking the forest floor or you know moss and leaves and things like that. This mm. has just a whisper of that earthiness, but it lets you know it's a Yamaha while still being very elegant, I think. Like this is mm-hmm. drinkable, elegant, would pair well with food. You're 110% correct there. I love that. Yeah. I think I was first introduced to this sake at a uh, at Izakaya that I don't think mm-hmm. is with us anymore called a Shigure. Mm-hmm. And this was absolutely perfect for izakaya food it would it just went with everything it was mm. so good awesome yeah great well this is a fun sake to sip on that's got a lot of meat on its bones a lot to talk about a lot to dig into but mm. we have to get back to our education overview for mm-hmm. all our listeners who may want to take a sake course in the new year if that's one of their resolutions just to get mm-hmm. certified we've already covered the courses for sake beginners. Right. But if you've if you've taken a certain amount of sake education already, maybe you're ready for the next step, what I would call like the advanced level. Mm. Yeah. And there's a number of <laughs> ways you can go. Yeah. There. So so uh, you know let's, let's let's unpack this. What do we have for advanced? Like you've uh, you've taken your beginner courses uh, and now you're ready to sink your teeth into something a little bit bigger. Well, we talked about three in the beginning, right? The Sake School of America advisor, Mm -hmm. the WSET level one, and John Mm -hmm. Gauntner's level one. All Mm -hmm. three of those have a level two. Uh Aha. Okay. So starting with John Gauntner, he offers a class 
in Japan called the Advanced Sake Professional Course. Mm-hmm. So this Advanced Sake Professional class from John Gardner is based in Tokyo, and then you fan out to different locations to visit breweries and visit brew pubs and things like that. The tuition costs about $1,500, and you do a lot of tasting in class, and then there's an exam that involves tasting as well. So there's theory and tasting to graduate mm. from this course. And the, the exam is offered while you're there, like on the last day or second to last day you take the exam. Oh, okay. So that's going to Japan. That's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, that's going to Japan. And you know, what you can do is you can, you said this was a uh, five days? Yeah, five days. So you do five days of that. You, put, you buffer a couple of days before, you buffer some time afterwards, you make a little vacation out of it. That sounds like a lot of fun. Now, every day do you, you end up back in Tokyo at, at the end of the day, so your accommodations in Tokyo are yes, yours, and you don't you don't have to make accommodations in these other cities. No, yet. okay, no. good. I good, think good. you 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 want to book a hotel near the Tokyo Education site, which is he lists on his website, and again, we'll have that in our show notes. Mm-hmm. And uh, then they get buses and trains from Tokyo to go out to all the all the different tours that they do. So, Oh, that's nice. And there's a fair amount of classroom instruction in Tokyo as well. And you know, mm-hmm. one other thing that we haven't talked about yet is the networking you can do if you take a class mm-hmm. like this. When I went to John Gautner's class in Tokyo, I met people from all over the world and it was great networking too. So that's an added bonus that you don't, you might not think about going in. That's, a, that's an excellent point. Tim. Yeah. So those are the two levels for the John Gautner class. The Sake School of America, there's the Sake Advisor for level one. And then what's considered like the level two is what's called the International Kiki Sake Shi. Mm -hmm. And that's the International Sake Sommelier course. Mm. And this is something that I've been teaching for a number of years. This one is- Teaching them all, Tim. (laughs) (laughs) This one is like a Sake Som class. And the time commitment is three full days- plus a exam day. Mm. And it's a pretty intense course. The cost for this one is just over a thousand dollars. And you get certified as an international English language Kiki Sake Shi or Sake Sam at the end of it. So it's a really comprehensive deep dive into sake and it's a builds off everything you learn in the sake advisor. And uh, it's a great course if you want to get certified. Again, if you're in that industry that connects to sake in some way, it's a wonderful mm-hmm. certification to have. Nice. I like the sound of that. Awesome. Yeah. So the WSET program, that UK-based program that kind of franchises their program out to different schools, that is also offered at a level three. So WSET mm. level three in sake um, mm-hmm. We had level one before. They skipped over level two, and they just called it level three. <laughs> so, that, okay, that's yeah. a choice. <laughs> it's a choice. Yeah, <laughs> there may be a level two someday, but this is their level three, and mm-hmm. it's about nine hundred dollars for the WSET program. And similar in scope, it's about three days of class instruction with a lot of blind tasting, and you learn how to taste sake. And again, here. All of these three courses have an exam with a written component and then Mm -hmm. a blind tasting component. So that's Mm -hmm. very scary for a lot of people. I know when I was a student, it was terrifying for me to blind taste something, not know what it (laughs) is, and you have to describe it. You have to write down a description of the sake. And it's uh, it's a little unnerving if you don't have a lot of experience with that. But that's what these courses are for, to train you in how to blind taste with confidence. Mm, Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And there's a couple other advanced courses that I would recommend as well that are worth mentioning for sure. The next one is what is known as the Sake Scholar Program. Michael Tremblay is the creator of the Sake Scholar course, and he's a friend of the pod. Uh, He's been on our show. He's a Sake Samurai, and he's also the author of Exploring the World of Japanese Craft Sake, a wonderful book that he wrote with Nancy Matsumoto. And on top of all those achievements, he also created this entire course, and he wrote Mm -hmm. a textbook to go along with it. This course 
focuses a lot on regionality in sake, and he goes through mm-hmm. every prefecture in Japan and the sake they make there and what the styles are and the geography is. I took this class a few years ago before the pandemic, and it's a wonderful deep dive into the regions of Japan. And uh, it is advanced, though. It's several days of class, three days of class with an online exam that is very challenging. So it's definitely not for beginners, but if you are mm-hmm. getting a little deeper into sake and you're interested in regionality, I mm. highly recommend Michael's course, The Sake Scholar. Mm. Yeah. All right. I have a lot of friends that took that course. They uh, they had a good time. Yeah. And again, great networking. Like I took the course. It was given at Brooklyn Kura here in New York. Mm-hmm. And there were a lot of people from the industry who came to New York for the three days for the class. And it was great to meet people that, you know, they might live in Texas or somewhere else. And, you know, normally I wouldn't get a chance to meet them regularly. So networking was great for that as well. Awesome. And when it comes to advanced, there's one last class, John, that I want to mention. It's the mm-hmm. Japan Sake and Shochu Academy. Oh. And this is another course that takes place in Japan. So you got to get yourself to Japan. Mm-hmm. And it's put on by the Japan Sake and Shochu Makers Association. Okay. And it's about $1,000. And this class takes place usually once a year around February or March. They change the dates a little bit each year. And it's a one-week class. And it's a bit of a deep dive. I would say it's not necessarily geared towards sake beginners, but they do blind tasting. You study Mm -hmm. sake and shochu. That's part of the certification for this particular. Mm, So it is is both. Both, yeah. Mm, Okay. So the WSET level three, the cost for that one is about $900. Hmm. And then the for this Sake Scholar class that we've been talking about, the cost for that in US dollars is around $800. And mm-hmm. that includes the textbook as well. Cool. All right. So, well, that's, yeah. Tim, that is interesting. And I, is there anything else? If I'm like super, I've done all of this, I am, I am now a threat <laughs> in the sake world. What, what's next for me after that? You know, that's a, that's a great question. When people take the sake som class with me, the Kiki Sake Shi, they're always like, Tim, I've taken your Kiki Sake Shi class, your Sake som class. I passed. What's next? What do I do next? What's the next level? What's beyond advanced? Beyond advanced. (laughs) And there are a couple options. I think more is going to develop over the years, but if you've graduated from the WSET level three or the Sake School of America, Sake Som class, or you've taken Mm -hmm. John's advanced Sake professional class and you want more, there's a couple options with limitations. Um, what I would say is one of the hardest exams in English mm. is what's known as the JSA diploma. This is the Japan mm. Sommelier Association. It's Ooh. a Japanese organization, and they issue an exam every year. Mm-hmm. And there's a textbook that goes along with the exam, but there's no real class. So you have to get the textbook and you pay a fee to take the test, it's a really hard test. Mm. Lots of difficult questions. And then you have to do a blind tasting as well. And then there's an Ooh. essay There's an essay question on the test there's as well. There's an essay? Yes. Oh, my. Yeah. So I took the test the first year they offered the JSA in the U.S., and I passed it. But uh-huh. I, I can say it's one of the harder exams I've taken in the world of sake. Wow. So if you're looking for that next level challenge and people Mm -hmm. who've passed the JSA, I think it's a real... Sounds like a beast. It's a beast. Yeah. But it's a certification that you can talk about proudly, I think, because it's it's really tough. And if you've passed it, I think it it speaks to your knowledge of sake. And and it's, it's a hard exam, but if you're looking for that next level, it's a really good thing to look into. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have one of those like like a wall like those uh, like attorneys do with all their education framed all I their, do. their certifications framed up? You do. I had all my certifications in a file folder, and I one mm-hmm. day decided to get them out. And in my office here, I have them on the wall. So nice. That's great. You know, of all the classes we've spoken about so far, I've mm-hmm. taken all of them, passed all of them except for one. 
I Ooh. never went to the Japan Sake and Shochu Academy oh. in Japan. So that's a relatively recent course. It started a few years before the pandemic and mm -hmm. my schedule never aligned. I've always wanted to take this class. So the mm. JSS class, the Academy, I've never taken that one, but all the other classes I've taken and passed. So, um, but there's, there's one more, John. One more class. One more? Yes. What, 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 what's more? This is probably the most hardcore of them all. Okay. It is an extension of the International Kikizake Shi. So the International Kikizake Shi that's taught by the Sake School of America is coordinated with SSI. So SSI is an organization in Japan called the Sake Service Institute. Mm -hmm. And they are one of the largest organizations in Japan that gives out certifications in the world of sake. Mm. And the International Kikizake Shi is their program that Sake School of America teaches. But they offer a master sommelier of sake. Master sommelier. Yes. Ah. This is only in Japan. And the reason I've never taken this is because it's in Japanese only. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> so not only is it in japan only and you've got to go to japan you need to be fluent i imagine yes uh, in reading and writing <laughs> in reading and writing oh that sounds not so great so if you don't have near native fluency in japan it's very difficult to take the master sommelier of sake in japan with ssi so that that is a hill I cannot climb at this point in my life. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, so, that's uh, step one, become fluent in Japanese. Step two, take this class. Yes. So I've always wanted to take this exam for master sommelier, but I don't speak Japanese well enough and I can't mm. read Japanese well enough. So mm -hmm. this, this remains an elusive dream. But mm. for those people out there who are native speakers of Japanese or people who lived in Japan and speak and read fluently, this master sommelier of sake is what I would call a hardcore certification it if you wanted to it. go to that top level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Anyway. Unless I want to quit all my jobs, study Japanese for two years, become fluent in reading and writing, then go back and taste this test, I don't think it's going to happen. It's good to have goals, Tim. It's good to have goals. It's good to yeah. have goals. Yeah. So we've looked at some beginner classes, some advanced classes, and some hardcore classes. What do you Very, What do you think? Uh, we'll see what happens, and if it's a if it's something I would like to pursue, formal education. Yeah. Tim, formal education and I are are not lifelong friends. I don't believe it. Even even in my career, I've had more practical applications than my my way forward. Are you a beauty school dropout, John? <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> you know, when you when you sign up for the Saki Advisor class, they send you a 75-question test quiz. Mm. You can test your knowledge on that and see if it's all super easy, you know all the answers, then maybe you can skip the Saki Advisor. So uh, that maybe, makes sense. maybe you could challenge yourself and take the test quiz and see, see how you do with that. All right, so... The right answer is I'm going to take the test quiz and see where I stand. <laughs> <laughs> you need a placement test. That's that's what you need. That's yeah. That somebody needs to make a placement test. Maybe you can be that someone, Tim. Yes. Mm. All right. Well, for anyone out there listening, if you want to get a sake certification in the new year as your revolution resolution, I hope this episode was useful to you, and I hope that you'll go for a beginner, advanced, or hardcore certification in the near future. Now, God, just to remind, actually call it hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> now, as a reminder, if you want all the details on any of the courses we talked about in today's episode, make mm -hmm. your way to sakerevolution.com, and there you can download a PDF cheat sheet of all the education opportunities that are out there for you to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And did you know that if you would like to support our show, you can get out there onto your favorite podcast platform of choice. Believe it or not, the most effective one is still Apple Podcasts. And you can leave us a review. And in doing so, you will help get the word out about our show. And a special hello, thank you, and shout out to our patrons. We really 
are so happy for our community on Patreon. If you'd like to support our show, visit patreon.com slash sake revolution to learn more. So without any further ado, I'd like you to raise your glass, figure out which sake course you're going to take and come